Hello there everyone and welcome to Digital Women. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Now if we know anything at all, we know that sex sells. Take these ladies for instance. These are the so-called booth babes of the E3 Video Gaming Expo. Video games are made for, by, and with male patriarchal values. Take Lara Croft, for example. He is a very dangerous man when his interests differ from yours. You'd be amazed how persuasive I can be, even with dangerous men. It is necessary, however, to look beyond the advertising. This is Digital Women, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You don't see much of the good in the advertising. Barbara Stern mentions the feminist sex reversal method is a useful way at looking at figures in advertising. If you switch the gender of a character, would the character be any less recognizable? What about Lara Croft? Well, she's a female Indiana Jones. Sort of. These thoughts found on WomenGamers.com are echoed in the scholarly literature. Anne-Marie Schleiner rec recognizes Lara as serving many roles. Lara as female Frankenstein monster, Lara as drag queen, Lara as femme fatale, Lara as a vehicle for lesbian gays, and finally as a positive role model. Sherman observes that women are more traditionally interested in puzzle games as opposed to games that involve shooting or quest completion. This. Oh, my boat's got a rusty anchor, rusty as she can be. The final irony is that if you look at the top selling video games, most of them are ones who don't advertise using women as sex objects and are games that will ap appeal to a wider market, such as The Sims or Myst. The game Grim Fandango is a classic example of this. While the game was extremely well reviewed, it did very poorly in sales. In conclusion, the image women have in game advertising is not representative of how women are portrayed in a lot of games. <laughs> 